Hey, I'm Caleb from You Can Make This Too. And I am Richard from 42 Fab. Richard is back. Last time he was here, we made some signs. I'll link to those videos. They're awesome. This time we're putting together a walnut coffee table. This video is about making the coffee table top as well as mounting it to the base. Richard has a separate video all about making the base yeah. and all the shenanigans we went through yeah. there, yeah. which uh, I'm not going to spoil that, but stick with us and I'll show you how you can make this too. I have these two walnut slabs I think are gonna be nice. They're kind of rough and I haven't decided how I'm gonna deal with that yet, but I know I need to get started, so stick with me and I'll show you how you can make this too. Whatever this turns out to be. I think this will be nice because they were book matched, which means that in the log, they were together like this. You can see how everything lines up. And then it was split. So these two sides are pretty good mirror images of their, each other. So I wanna keep them in this orientation. It's gonna be, it's gonna look the best. They also mirror each other this way, but not as well. And because of this V here and the way that um, rot down there lines up, I don't care for that look as much. So I'm gonna keep them like this. So the first thing I know I have to do is straight line rip this and get the two middle seams to glue up. You can tell that they warped some, so now they're against each other. So I need to flatten it out some, but I don't, I don't know how flat I'm gonna get it. I've got one edge straight lined on here, so they kind of come together. It's not good enough for a glue up. I'll mess with that later, but it lets me, it's a starting point, it has to get done. I don't know how rough I want to leave this. I'm going to start with a skip plane and see how that looks. But to do that, I at least need to start getting something flat. So we're going to start face jointing it a little bit, then run it through the planer and just kind of see how it looks. This is the bottom. You can see I didn't get it totally flat. That's not necessary. There is enough flat here to run it through the planer and get a good parallel surface. Because it's the bottom, it's okay if it's not perfectly flat, because of course the flatter I get it, the more material I lose. And I want to keep this kind of thick. So to the planer. If you like winning tools, free swag, and plane discounts, and other awesome stuff like that, you might want to consider becoming a patron over on Patreon. This month's contest prize is the DeWalt Atomic Compact Drill Driver Set. All you have to do is become a patron at any level, find the post, leave your answer, and wait to see if you win. If you're interested in that, there will be links below. And if Patreon isn't your thing, just watching, commenting, and sharing this video go a long way to help. Thank you. And for filling all these voids, I'm going to use Star Bond Medium Thick in a dark color. That'll blend in nicely. Hit it with a little activator. And because I'm using the Medium Thick, it's actually good enough to do some minor gap filling, anything too big, and I'd want to use epoxy. But for little gaps like these, the CA glue's okay. Before gluing, I clamp the boards together and run them over the jointer. Doing it this way cancels out any deviation from square in my jointer fence, and it's seldom perfectly square. Then I apply some glue and get to clamping and using calls. If you want all the details on my panel glue up process, I'll leave a link below to my video on that. After the glue dries, I move on to stabilizing the rodden and punky sections of wood. For that, I use some Total Boat Penetrating Epoxy and liberally brush it on. It doesn't soak into the good wood very much, but where the wood does suck it up, I keep reapplying until it stops. After it dries off camera, I sand it down before moving on to finishing. My go-to finish lately has been Total Boat Halcyon. Uh, it's water-based, so low VOC, easy cleanup. I really like that. But these bags are pretty cool too because you can squeeze out all of the air so you won't get that skim layer and it's really easy to mix it up. And for tabletops, anytime I want like really thin coats, I like to use a brush with this. I found that a roller tends to go a little too heavy. And then just lay it down, nice long strokes, and it comes out looking great. 
Halcyon is a gloss finish, so after the third coat dries, I use some extra fine steel wool to knock back the gloss. I had a craft fair that I wanted to bring the coffee table to before the base was finished, so I whipped this one up as a quick temporary. It took about two hours, and I left this in here just to show you how simple a coffee table base can be. I cut all of my pieces to 7 degrees. Nailing the angle isn't important, so long as you don't adjust the saw, and everything gets cut the same. A stop block makes sure that all of the pieces were cut to the same size. I generally avoid using 2x4s for furniture, but when I do use them, I knock off the rounded corners at the table saw. I think it makes a big difference in appearance. Also, 2x4s really aren't very flat, at least the ones I can get. So I sent them through the planer as well to get some flat faces and also take off some of the thickness. What made these go so quick was using pocket holes for the joinery. I took care to put them on the pieces that would go against the floor and the table so they won't be seen. Off camera, I sprayed them with some rattle can black lacquer before drilling holes for mounting screws. And that's it, the quick simple bases are done. The legs came in from Richard, so let's have a look. This is gonna be pretty cool. This looks a lot better than our attempt. To make sure I've got this spread to the width I want so the angle's right. An angle grinder would work fine, but I've got a bandsaw now, so I'm gonna use that. Now it's really easy to see how when these were made, they got some bends in them. So I'm gonna do some tacks. This is pretty pliable. So use some tacks to pull it and hold it straight. To be able to secure the base to the top, I drill some holes through the strapping. The farthest screw holes are only about 16 inches apart, and across that kind of distance there fortunately won't be very much wood expansion. And even more fortunately, that lack of wood expansion isn't going to disappoint my wife. But I size the holes about 50% larger than the screws anyway to give them some room to move. After it's drilled, I wipe up the cutting oil with some alcohol and take some quick swipes with a flap disc on the angle grinder to remove any burrs. Off camera, I wipe down the base and then sprayed it with some clear lacquer to keep it from rusting. I use some self-drilling hardwood screws with washers to tie the two together and then stand it up. really cool to have a coffee table again. I also just finished this couch and the video and plans will be out available for it soon as well as for the console table I'm about to build. If you want to catch those make sure you subscribe and hit the bell so YouTube actually notifies you when those videos come out. And if you like my piano bar or aquarium stand I've already done videos on those. Anyway to the outro and glamour shots. Anyway thanks for stopping by. I hope you learned something or at least entertained and make sure to check out Richard's video so you can see uh, really how not to build a yeah. table base. And anyway, until next time, thanks for stopping by. <laughs>